Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Precious Lord to God, we do uh, invite you, dear Lord, not only into this building, but into our community, and in, most importantly, into our hearts. We pray that you would anoint the individuals here tonight, dear Lord, making the decisions for our community. We thank you for the uh, privilege to be put into that position, and we do also pray that you would heal our community and heal our nation, and we give you thanks and praise for all the mighty things that you are going to do, dear Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is that everybody? We got a uh, presentation tonight? No? Nothing. Okay, public comments. We have anybody lined up? No one has uh, requested. There was a request for the end of the meeting, but I have to reserve it for that period of time. Okay. All right, and um, reports. Start off the mayor's report, and she's not here. I don't believe this is a muser. I don't think she's on the phone, or is she? No. I just wanted to again. Um, congratulate her and her staff for the award that they received for our uh, the order of our finances and um, she received a, an award now her staff and it doesn't mean that she's doing any better job now than they have in the past they always do a great job and finally uh, recognized for this and i just you know hope our, our community realizes the uh, really really good job that her and such a small and uh, myself, obviously, uh, one of the things that we'll be talking about tonight with the coronavirus is um, have a lot of people, each of us, have talked to us about the uh, mass order. And um, I just wanted to touch on, you know, yeah. and how I feel on this. That the uh, city manager obviously has made a decision on this and you know, realized that individuals in the community, how you feel about it, if you're strongly in support of it or strongly not in support of it, that uh, this decision here that the uh, city manager has leaned on a, um, a side of, of caution and um, that if you, if you believe that it's a uh, over the top or if it's, it's a good thing or not a good thing, that you realize that um, his purpose for doing so is for the good of the community. And that's part number one of, of what his first intention is, and it's for no other reason. So I'd ask that we um, keep this in mind, that we be patient, that we stick together, and that we don't get in attack mode and have our, our hair on, on fire or anything like that, but that we are, are patient with each other, we build each other up and encourage each other and not look to uh, tear down because the thing in, you keep in mind and um, I spoke to the city manager on this is to realize that um, this will be reevaluated once certain benchmarks that are, are put in place once they're they're hit that the city manager will reevaluate and um, possibly even let off or, or remove this uh, this order but the uh, most important thing is for us not to be led by emotions and get all crazy or our opinions on things and, and stop fighting each other and stay united together through this and um, one of the things that I was looking into today that's really really important in this is that you build up your own immune system you know I've heard a lot of talk on this and you, you do so by um, getting proper amounts of rest um, doing some exercise eating properly uh, getting out of the house and, and getting some some fresh air and stuff like that that way that you're not 
completely dependent on a, a, a mask or anything else. That way that if you come in contact with any type of germs or, or viruses or anything, that you give your body a, a little bit of a, a, a greater chance to fight them off. And that's, that's all I have. Um, we have anything by um, any of the council members? We, I don't know where we want to start off at. Mr. Yeah. Mayor, I have one thing. Okay. Um, back in 2016, um, May 4th through the 9th was designated as uh, National Economic Development Week. Uh -huh. uh, we are in that week right now. There's still a lot of uh, webinars and cyber conferences going on about uh, economic development, uh, you know, growth and, and those things. And basically, the, uh, the goal of this week is to increase awareness for local programs that create jobs. Uh, advance career development opportunities and increase the quality of life in uh, communities everywhere. And uh, even though we're all sitting at home and watching webinars and doing that, there's still a lot of discussion going across the state of Ohio and neighboring states uh, trying to attract economic development, and we're still working on that here locally. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, anything else there, Mr. Waddell? Not at this time. Okay, any of the other council people have anything? Mr. Bariak? Report. Nothing report. Um, Mr. Savet. Nothing. Uh, Ms. Braymeyer. Nothing today. Okay, and how about Mr. Alberini? Hey, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I appreciate the opportunity um, to speak just for a few seconds. Um, I know there is much turmoil uh, in the community over this mask uh, ordinance, and I can understand that. But I think we should keep... Uh, we should keep a simple mask in perspective. The community lost a three-year-old little girl this week to, from a battle of cancer. And honestly, I think that's where um, my heart just breaks for the mom and dad. My sympathies go out to them. Um, the little girl's gone on to be with the Lord, but that really puts life in perspective uh, in the big picture for me. So that's the most important thing uh, uh, right now in the community. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, do we have the law director on? Yeah, he's on the line. Mr. Fritz, do you have anything? I do not. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the finance director is not. For the law director. Go ahead, Mr. Bariak. Uh, Mr. Fritz, I'd like to ask you tonight, sir. How long were you aware of the uh, city manager being wanting to be special, uh, I mean, uh, what's the position? Excuse me, what's your position now, Mr. Uh, Lynch? City manager. No, no, what's the position, the, the other position? Uh, can you be more specific? I could be more specific. What was the, uh, it's on the, uh, on the, uh, the, the, oh my, I'm blanking out right now. Uh, uh, Mr. Barrett, can I interrupt? Yes. You know which position I'm talking about. We are we talked about it, Mr. Fritz. That's what I want to ask you. Can I be heard? Is, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Wonderful. It's not a position. What's happening is he has a duty. One of his assignment duties is safety director. The reason that came about, he had asked me uh, about seven or eight weeks ago when we first had some inklings that there's going to be some continued issues coming down the pipe. Let me explain real quickly. It's not a separate position. Our charter is the first place I looked. There is no safety director in our charter. So then if there's nothing in the charter, I refer back to the Ohio Revised Code. The Ohio Revised Code has a statutory form of government. There's about three or four that they lay out. One of them is a city manager plan. That plan under the ORC pretty much follows what our charter lays out. And when you go to that, I did the research, and this is from Kathy Halter, a law firm that does quite a bit of mutual work. It says the second optional plan is the city manager plan, in which the council is a legislative authority, and an appointed city manager serves as the administrative head of the municipal government. Since he's the administrative head, and you go to a, a, a chart that lays out the responsibilities, he's responsible for the fire department, the police department, and the service, the, the general service of the community. So he is the administrative head. He is 
in fact, the person that would be acting as the safety director if we had a titled position. Finally, sir, if the county, Trumbull County Emergency Management, has to have a chain of command in order to facilitate community in the time of a crisis or some sort of emergency, and they have always listed our city manager as that person. Does that answer your question, sir? Well, part of it, Mr. Mr. Fritz. Mr. Fritz, how come council wasn't made aware of this? If you knew about it for six or seven weeks, how come, uh, excuse me, I don't know if any of the other council people know about it, but I got blindsided by a uh, uh, email on a Wednesday night and uh, I, I knew nothing about it before. And then uh, I'd like to know why, why we weren't kept up to date. And the other, the other thing I want you to answer me, go ahead and answer that one first. Why weren't we kept up to date on this? Well, quite frankly, sir, when the city manager asked me for the opinion, I gave him the opinion. It's not my job to disseminate the information unless the city manager is not doing his job. So it's up to him how he proceeds with that. Um, it's not, it, it's, it, at the time, it wasn't creating a big crisis. There is who has the authority to proceed as the state and the federal government was going to issue orders. Simple answer is the city manager. Oh, okay. Well, What's Mr. your second Fritz. question, sir? Okay, next question is then. You're talking about a city for manager, form of government. I'm going by the charter. And the charter says the mayor shall serve as official and ceremony head of the city government, shall be recognized as the head of city government and the governor for military purposes by the courts and for the purpose of preserving city law. He shall be the presiding member of council and recognized as a member of council, blah, 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 and then only in the event of a tie. Mr. Klein, did you give up your head of the government and to act in a time of emergency to Mr. Lynch? I know I didn't. Did you no. give up your, did you give up your? Did, he doesn't have that authority. He is, he, you're talking about something completely different, John. No, he, he didn't give up his no, authority I'm not, up there. I'm please. He, he did not give up his authority, John. What is your point of order? My point of order is you're incorrect in your statement. The mayor has not given up his order. Mr. Lynch also holds the title of HR representative. Are you the law director? I'm, I'm asking the law well, director He right also now, holds sir. different titles. Well, if you want a point of order, does. when you get a law degree, you can tell me. Uh, I'm asking him, that. did you give up your... I wouldn't answer that. That's ridiculous. There you go. There you go. Excuse All me, I'm saying, gentlemen. All I'm excuse saying, me, gentlemen. Did uh, you, we're, we're in, we're okay, in excuse me. The law director. I'm not going to argue. I'm not arguing. Did you, Mr. Klein, were you aware of this before this happened on Wednesday? No, sir. Huh? No. Okay. I wonder if any of the other council, were you aware of it, Mr. Waddell? I did this for years, John. Oh, oh, no, known that he was going to do what he did? No, I know that the city manager has different titles and responsibilities. I also know that if there is a time of need where there is a crisis, these, uh, these uh, goals and these other things that they're out there, these NEMA uh, titles that you have, they're going to come in here and look for somebody who can take and organize and has the, the documentation to do those. And there are people in town that have the documentations that the mayor doesn't have. Yes, he's the ceremonial head. He's supposed to call the, the National Guard. It doesn't mean he can't be, you know, he has to be the safety service director. That's not what that says. That's the city manager's job. Mr. Fritz, <laughs> why was council bypassed on the on this uh, on this uh, formation of if it's not called a position why was council bypassed point of order point of order mr mayor may i say something please i'm not sure what mr bariak uh his goal his here what his goal is or what he's trying to accomplish but i think it's quite clear that this is another chaotic statement for mr bariak um it is what it is we're not here to split hairs um, Mr. Lynch and Mr. Fritz, I trust their legal opinions. They're both attorneys, and uh, they wouldn't do anything if it was against the law. So I'm not sure what your point of order is, Mr. Bariak. Excuse me, Mr. Fritz, well, I want to know. Sorry. Excuse me, please, John. Please, please. You know how you say please? I want to hear what your goal is here. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? What's what's the what's the what's the resolution here? What is it that you want done? Well, first first of all, I'd like to say that. It, this whole, I believe in the mask. This is what we're talking about, about the order to everybody to wear a mask. And I, I believe in a mask. I wear a mask all the time. 
But I believe that this was gone about. We went about this in a bad way with the businesses. We didn't form a partnership with the businesses. We blindsided everybody and myself, sir. I'm here to defend myself tonight because I, counsel, I'm trying to even get counsel to be off the hook for this. I had no knowledge of it, nor would I participate in this. If I would have had a chance to be told what was going on, then I could have maybe said, okay, at least I have a way to defend myself. I had numerous phone calls, numerous phone calls. This has divided the community. This has divided the community. So what was thought of in haste, now we're all paying for. I have other questions of what I'd like to go on. That's why I'm, what I'm trying to get at, uh, Joe. I'm trying to get at that I don't have, didn't have any responsibility for this, and I presume neither did counsel. That's why I asked if they had any knowledge of it. Shame on them. Point of order. Mr. Mayor, please, point of order. Uh, Mr. Barak, let me use your own words. When the city manager was hired, he was given that authority by you and other members of council to make these decisions, okay? Now, he made a decision based on the information that he had at hand. And I'm gonna be quite honest with you, some of the information that came out of Columbus, Ohio, and I'm, I like Mr. DeWine, especially this last week, was very, very, very sketchy, very sketchy. So maybe I don't agree with that decision, but I respect that decision. All of us, have, all of us here on council have had phone calls and actually, some of the comments I've seen on Facebook, I'm astounded by over a mask. Some of the people that say they're not going to solicit our businesses in Newton Falls, I cannot believe that. Why would you penalize the businesses in Newton Falls for the city wanting to have the citizens wear a mask? I don't understand that at all. You know, we've got the same folks who complain about economic development, then I'm going to spend my money out of town because I'm mad about wearing a mask. So I'll ask you again, Mr. Bariak. Please let me know, or please let council know, what is your goal here? What do you want to accomplish? What, are, what I'd like to accomplish here tonight is not to belate anybody, but I'd like to ask questions so we can bring this matter to light to all the citizens, to let them know how it transpired and what went on. And, and there's other questions I have. I wait to ask the city manager, and if I have to come back with you, I will. Bring a little bit of First, peace here. Excuse let, let, me. Then let me ask Mr. Fritz. Could I have sure. Mr. Fritz? I'd like to. Yeah. Add, this was a police order. Is this true? Is this a police order? I I don't believe so. This is an order issued by the city manager. Well, did well, it say? What, I guess, what is your definition of police order? I, I'm confused. Aren't there signs on the doors of the buildings? I've not seen any, but I was told they were distributed, yes. And what is the charge? What what ordinance did this, you know, like we have the dog poop ordinance where your your dog's caught poop and we, it's a minor misdemeanor. What What is the, what is the, uh, what is the charge for not uh, wearing your mask, sir? What did we pass? What did this council legislate that we uh, now that, that the people can be guilty of? I've had a lot of questions on that. What are they guilty of? There's a section in the code of the ordinance of the city that indicates the sort of the conduct is if you are doing something that can cause health and damage to someone else. Well, I've been suggesting that I'm not telling the police to go out and charge everybody the minute they see them. The city manager has indicated, and I believe it's a good indication, in that we're trying to send a good example and put the law out there. There's plenty of times we have laws that are codified, and the police can use the discretion in the, in the application of that law. So the answer to your question is there's an ordinance regarding disorderly conduct that would be applicable to that violation. In other words, this isn't a new department, then. No, it's not. It's not a new department. Okay. It's not a new position. We didn't create some sort of office or something unusual that's never been there. I, I was here in town about ten years ago when we had a train derailment. 
And that train derailment there was some worried about what chemicals were on that train. The former manager, Mr. Haney, was contacted because he was in for, he's the administrative head and was the person to coordinate out emergency situations. No one said anything about it then. I'm not sure why we have to inform everybody of what the law already says. I understand that as a councilman, people are asking you for questions. For that, I would say I apologize. But we can't always know what's going to fire everybody up and get them all concerned. This is not something new that the city manager acts as the safety director for the community. Always been that way. Mr. Lynch coming in, having the situation where it was escalated, came to me and asked the question because he always goes out and tries to verify before he makes steps. Um, so that, that's where we are with this. Do you have any additional questions, sir? <clears throat> you know, uh, Mr. Fritz. Uh, Thank you, sir. I, I asked Is Ms. there any other questions I, from any? I asked Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. King today if she could find anything in any type of minutes or anything, probably she said she wouldn't be able to find in any minutes, but where anybody that has been our city manager took on and, and start calling himself safety service director. I haven't seen any proof of that. I haven't seen any, and I was around during the tornado in 85 and 86, and that was an emergency. So, you know, I mean, it's, until I see some proof, uh, you know, how can I believe what well, they, 20, what happened 20 years ago and somebody's hearsay? I, 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 I'd like to have some kind of proof, and then I, you know, I'd say, okay. Mr. Bar Mr. Barrett, I, I don't understand the question of proof. We have the law that I read that laid out the duties of the city manager as the administrative head. I, I, every time sometime, some issue comes up, it doesn't say he's the human resource person for our community in the charter, but he takes care of employment situations. He doesn't say he's the union negotiator when we have negotiations, but that's what his jobs are. The city manager does the tasks that are administrative duties. I don't know how I'm supposed to create something that's not there. You're looking for proof that doesn't exist. He is the administrative head. Any type of administrative work is his duty. That's what the charter says. Now, the safety issue is an administrative issue. It's not something where, where there's an emergency. The federal or the county or the state emergency management has to contact five councilmen. They go directly to the city manager. So you can ask for proof, and I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think there's something in writing that says David Lynch, city manager, is now the safety director. I'll tell you right now, it's not there. Whoa. He's the administrative head. It's an administrative duty. He administrates. That's hey, all I can help you with, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Fritz, look, the, the thing is this, is that on charter forms of government, there's more than one charter in, in the state of Ohio. And I did a little research over the weekend, and some of the charters that have uh, a safety service director don't, e don't have a police chief. The safety service director is the police chief. We have a police chief. I understand. We have a police what chief, that don't we, sir? Mr. Bar Mr. Bart, what does that prove? There's, you're right. The city of Warren has an elected safety director. Other people are appointed by a mayor. There's multiple methodologies. So I have to start first with our charter. And you will agree that our charter does not say who the safety director is. Do you agree with that, sir? I can't find it. We have any position called safety service director. Well, well, I next cannot step find is, any, go, anything go, that says we have safety service director. That's simplistic, I understand. Point of order, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Point of order, please. Point of order. Again, I'm not sure what we're trying to accomplish here. In, in the explanation that you had given us, Mr. Fritz, says that who's ever city manager, not just Mr. Lynch, but who's ever city manager, uh, is the de facto de facto safety service manager, I would suspect, okay? And so a lot of those communities that Mr. Baryak may have researched, maybe Warren, maybe Niles, maybe Streetsboro, maybe are, are much, much, much bigger communities than Newton Falls, Ohio, that can afford 
that position of safety service director. So through my interpretation, what you're telling me then, Mr. Whoever's in that position is a safety service director, the HR director, the employment director, et cetera. Does that sound about right? Well, yes. M Mr. Fritz, maybe I better rephrase this because I think we're getting off on the wrong. No point of order. May okay. I speak, I, I, Mayor? I, I, okay. Yes, Ms. Braymeyer. What's your point of order? Ms. Braymeyer? Yes, I would look. Yes, I would like to know uh, who Mr. Baryak thinks should be taking this position. If he feels that Mr. Lynch isn't the person, who would you think should be doing directing our community? I, I Mrs. Uh, Baryak, that should have been discussed with council. Uh, Let Mr. Fritz answer that, John. Okay. There is no one else assigned under the Ohio law. The city manager is the de facto safety director. And, Mr. Mayor, I'm not going to call a point of order, but I'm going to indicate that this is past questions to the law director. I believe we're going to have the same or similar questions to the city manager in a few minutes. And if we're going to have an argument about this, there should be a motion on the floor that indicates what sort of change we're trying to reach. And, and you know Thank what, you. If, if we look at the uh, safety director, say it was the chief of police, I, I looked into these things myself a little bit, and the chief of police answers to the, uh, the, the city manager. So, you know, I looked in these things a little bit, too, to, to make sure that we weren't off base somewhere. And I after we were each notified. I can't either. What's that? I can't hear the okay. I, all I said was... Um, to not split hairs on these things, I looked into this a little bit too to see who the the law or the uh, safety director was. And a safety director, if it was the police chief, the police chief answers to the uh, the city manager. And um, so you you look at the situation here. Is after we were notified of this situation, uh, I went to the city manager, and when I spoke to him, not to um, I knew that there was a lot of people in the community that were for it, a lot of people uh, opposed to it, and so there was a little bit of division. And the only thing that I had asked the city manager, and, and I'm sure that he'll um, speak on this in a little bit, is I asked him, I said, what our exit strategy is here? So that each individual, including Mr. Bariak, Mr. Waddell, and anybody else listening, um, that it's not a, a situation that's open-ended. That just that we want to know with the masks and things, what do we need to achieve before this is there's a release in it? Um, and Mr. Uh, Lynch, do you do you have anything on that? Yeah, um, my anticipation was to answer that uh, at a later time, but I can certainly respond to that. Yeah, this is not a permanent plan. Um, this is a plan to protect our citizens, but my anticipation is. We will have a target date for completion of this order. It will be announced sometime soon. I am conferring with the uh, health professionals uh, throughout the state and some of our other officers throughout the state. And my expectation is in the next few days, I'll be able to make an announcement as to what that target is so the planning that you're talking about, Mr. Mayor, can take place. Are we into questions to the city manager yet? Yeah. I'd like to ask the city manager a well, couple questions. Well, ma'am, I think we have to move on the city manager report, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right. And, and, and I've already made that statement, so I'll now defer to questions. I have nothing for the report. Dave, I just want to ask you, why did, we, why did you go against the governor at this late stage in the game? What, what, when you knew about it, Mr. Fritz just said you knew about it for weeks, and he knew about it. Why did you wait 10 weeks in when we're just about ready to open everything? And, and why, why did you wait so late? Well, I think there are a couple of things you need to understand. Uh, you're misunderstanding what the law director said about the research. The question that took place several weeks ago was, who is the safety director of Newton Falls? It wasn't a question about masks. No question about masks was raised six or seven weeks ago. The question that I asked the law director several weeks ago is, under our charter, who is the director of public safety? He did the research, he reported back to me, and he said, under our charter, by virtue of the fact that our charter 
makes the city manager the administrative head and by virtue of the Ohio Revised Code designation under the city manager form of government that the city manager is the director of public safety. That's the only thing that he researched and responded to me several weeks ago. And he also illuminated the fact that that's been the case for many, many years. When Mr. Haney dealt with the issue regarding the train derailment, he was the safety director. He was the, the city manager of the safety director five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And as safety director, when the issue regarding the masks came up, I did in fact undertake the responsibility that I have no choice but to undertake. I can't make you the safety director. I can't put it on the shoulders of the mayor. As much as I'd like to shove that responsibility on somebody else, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna shirk that responsibility that you gave me when you asked me to be the city manager. Now, with reference to the governor, the governor and Dr. Acton made a very impassioned uh, series of speeches week before last, indicating the importance of the masks. And a number of medical personnel and reference points were made by the governor and Dr. Acton about why the masks are important as a barrier not for you as the person who's wearing the mask, but for the person who might be expelled to the molecules of COVID-19 that might come out of your nose and come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. It was a very impassioned plea. As a result of all those announcements by the mayor, Dr. Acton, on Monday afternoon, the governor on television before all the citizens of the state and picked up by the national news announced that the wearing of masks would be mandatory for customers. Mandatory for customers in stores. That was Monday afternoon. And I studied the same literature the governor did, and I took it very, very seriously, especially what Dr. Acton had to say on Monday afternoon. On Monday morning, the governor issued a written document. And the written document, he said, well, the mass will save lives. It's very important, but I will make it mandatory instead of right away, I'll make it mandatory on May 12th. That was on Tuesday morning of, uh, of last week. So there you go as of Tuesday morning. Then Tuesday afternoon, the governor said, because there were people objecting and they found it offensive, it's not gonna be mandatory, but he looked you right in the camera and everybody else in the state, and said it's highly, urgently recommended. Now, I went to see if the science changed between Monday and Tuesday. I went to see if the literature the governor relied on and Dr. Axon relied on changed between Monday and Tuesday. It did not change. Not one iota did that literature change. And for that reason, I assume the responsibility I had as safety director of the city of Newton Falls responsibility you gave me. You're not the one coming under attack. I'm the one coming under attack. You may say city council, they're saying, well, why aren't you doing something to your city council? You've heard the law director. He's indicated that responsibility lies solely on the shoulders of the city manager. If you wanna change the charter, change the charter. It would certainly take that burden off my shoulders, but the science didn't change. And as it relates to splitting the community, one of my most ardent opponents in the city of Newton Falls made a point of presenting an internet poll to city of Newton Falls residents in order to demonstrate that I was wrong. He wanted to prove that I was wrong, that you're right that we're splitting the community. And 85% of the people responding to Newton Falls said the city manager's right. Now listen, of course there's room for debate and difference in policy. And you could fire me if you think that I'm not protecting the citizens of Newton Falls, but when I have citizens calling me that you haven't heard from, saying that the only place they'll shop in is Newton Falls because it's where I'm guaranteed to be safe, when people call me and say my elderly mom finally feels that there's a place where universally she can be safe, you're doing the right thing, Mr. Lynch. That little tiny bit of encouragement keeps me going in light of the attacks 
where people have called me names that I can't even say on the floor of this council. I would be out of order if I repeated those words. Councilman, it's a tough job. And criticize me, throw barbs at me. Call, throw barbs at me, but 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 I'm trying to get councilman is that I'm 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 trying to do what we think is the right thing. You asked me the reason, I've given the reason, but if you choose to discharge me because I've discharged my duties, I'll accept that. You've got a right to do that. But in the meantime, I still have to do my job. We've heard all that. I want to I want to ask you, Mr. Lynch. Do you have the right to enforce this personally? No. Then I had a call this morning from a business owner that said that you went in there, didn't talk to the business owner, didn't talk to the I'll manager. Excuse me. I'll get more than an allegation. I don't that, want to bring names the, into this. Well, that's not here for this meeting. This is not hearsay. This is not it. Uh, what Let's does Mr. Uh, Fritz, is that, am I, uh, I want to tell about what I had this morning. And if the fellow has to come forward, maybe you'll I'm, have I'm to going, I, Listen, I'm going to hear the question. We don't make what I'm saying is, do you have the right to enforce this personally? You just asked me that, and I said no. Okay. Well, then we'll go on. Then, then, then that's... Then. By the way, Councilman, you will agree I have the right to talk to human beings in Newton Falls. Is that true? I talk to a lot of them. Exactly. And am I allowed, am I allowed to talk to a business owner? This wasn't... <laughs> Let's, Am I allowed to talk it. to a business let's, owner? Let's drop it. The business you, owner. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You want to drop it? Come you, to you, sir. You want to bro you? You brought it up. You're I, saying I'm let's drop saying, it. Well, I was told that Mr. I was Waddell told. Is calling me out of order now. Uh, I understand. I'm not trying it. to argue. I asked you, do you have the right to enforce this personally? And I said no, I don't. Okay, then that's over. And that's I haven't right. issued a single citation. No. Not one. No. What are your duties on this then? What are your duties under this uh, safety service director? What more? What more well, I, I don't have the ORC in front of me, but generally speaking, the safety director is responsible for maintaining the health and safety of the community generally. So we're talking about COVID-19 here. Uh, safety means that if I receive calls, I'm concerned about speeding in part of the community, and I think people get hurt by uh, automobile speeding, I'll communicate with the police chief and he'll do something with that information. Uh, if I believe that there are bars that are serving liquor uh, beyond the time that they should, such that patrons are getting drunk and causing danger to our community by going out and driving drunk, that's part of health and safety. If I believe that there is a rat infested home in which the danger of the communication of disease is significant as safety director, I've got an obligation to do what I think I need to do in order to protect the community. So it's a very, very wide range of responsibilities under that title. I don't, I didn't come up here tonight to argue. I came up just to ask some questions. My main concern, Mr. Lynch, was that this coronavirus has been around here since the second week in February, even earlier than that. Yes. It seems like the horse is out of the barn and we're trying to close the gate now. People are antsy. Uh, I don't know about what survey you ran, and you can find 50 or 60 online. I can find probably 200 online, too. I'm talking about it's divided the community. No, it hasn't. That, yes, it has, sir. Well, you're entitled to an opinion just like well, everybody else. By the way, Mr. Mayor, may I say something to Mr. Lynch for a moment? Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, one of the comments that Mr. Lynch uh, 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 failed to bring up was that a resident over here uh, in the area who had called Mr. Lynch up and thanked him for making Newton Falls one of the safest communities in the area to shop. Think about that. Whether you agree with it, or disagree with it, a number of residents said the same thing. Thank you for making the area the safest area to shop in Trumbull County. To me, that means a lot. Now, I will say this, okay, Mr. Lynch, you, you have taken a lot of heat over this, and, and and I respect that. You're standing firm in your belief, and I, and I, I wholeheartedly uh, agree with that. You know, 
what scares me when we had the last public meeting you brought up a what if situation what if someone passes away and you told mr bariak that you look directly what if someone passes away and you said to mr bariak do you want me to give them mr bariak's phone number and john said yeah i'll take the phone number i'm just paraphrasing that that was really 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 cold really extremely cold so i look at it like this if we don't do something then things happen you're getting blamed if you do do something you're getting blamed we had church yesterday in our parking lot okay we could not go into the church and that really bothers me really bothers me but i can go to walmart and shop i can go to target and shop i can't go to church because of this whole situation now i understand people are unhappy but i think you're doing the best job that you can do with the information that you have available and again, I'll say this, the message from DeWine's office this last week or 10 days was very, very, very sketchy. So I commend you for standing firm. I understand people don't like it, and it might be a, a, a bit of an inconvenience, but um, I think you should stay the course, and I think there's going to be an end game to this very, very shortly. I agree. I agree. Any other questions? Yeah. I want to respond to Mr. Alberini. Okay. Mr. Alberini, there are businesses that don't even have masks to give out. One business was charging a dollar. That's not a lot of money. But what I'm trying to say is, when are we going to? How can we legislate stuff we can't enforce? That's what I'm saying. I don't want. All I want to do is what we can do as a council. We could have had public discourse about this between ourselves, a work session. Look, I would have called you, Mr. Alberini, or Mr. Waddell, but I'd be accused of having a round robin. It's hard, but we could have probably got together and talked a little bit about this and had a united front that would have gone over a lot better with the, with the people. Instead, sir, because of me being kept out of the loop and not because it was on purpose, maybe, I had people coming down cursing me. They're going to recall the whole council they're going to do away with the charter yell and scream well there was no reason to get the public this upset i just thought it was ill thought out and uh i had mentioned it to mr when i got the email i said maybe we ought to slow down on this mr lynch is the boss i have no right to tell him what to do he said we're going to go ahead through it i said okay For the city manager. Yes, uh, Mayor, I'd like to speak. Okay, Ms. Bremeyer. Okay, if the people out there, if you do not want to wear a mask, don't wear one. But the rest of us are going to wear a mask to save ourselves. Thank you. Okay, the, o the only thing I have before we move on is um, obviously I think being the mayor here, I think the same as every other council person that, that ran, that we um, ran for office for the same purpose for the community. I know I look at Mr. Bariak, Mr. Waddell, and the other names here, and I had promised, you know what, I'm not into different groups or different cliques. I don't, I don't look to, to please anybody but to do what's best for our community and i, I talked to the, the city manager like i said afterwards and um the law director talked about the, the law that um gives him this additional hat to where you could call it and it reminds me of when i pastored the church I was a senior pastor but i had the hat also of the senior snow shoveler if nobody else was there to, to clean the sidewalks or the the senior person to make sure that I bought bread for communion or, or whatever else it was. And, and the thing about it is right now is, is I hope that, you know, I don't, I don't say if I agree with the mask thing or if I don't agree with the mask thing, but I want what's best for my community. And, and I trust that the, uh, the city manager feels that way too. And I, like I had said, that there are certain criteria that he's looking at what the, the governor decides, what different things take place, not forever here. 
And that's what I made sure us is that we're not going to have something going on that just um, there's no end to this. And then there's more control and more control. But that's that's not the case that um, that he's looking. He made a, a decision that he thought was best for the community. And, and like what I had said to him, city manager, you know what? You're like the quarterback of the team. You're going to get a lot of credit undeserved. Um, are you willing to fall on the sword for this? It's your decision. And he said yes. And that's all he's doing right now is he's. Um, making a decision for the community that he feels best of it. I would just ask each of us that we give him a, a little bit of time and, and we're, we're patient and know that the very soonest that he, he can, that he wants to see things get back to as, as normal as, as possible. That's all I have. Um, do we have any changes to tonight's agenda? I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Approval to the previous minutes. Okay, do we have a second on that? Second. Okay. I'd like to amend the, uh, make a motion to amend the minutes for, uh, I've looked over my phone and there's in there, the city manager said he called me 25 times. I can't find it anywhere. So maybe he was over exaggerating. But I'd like the 25 calls stricken to a, just the number of calls. I'd like to have it amended. To he made call, I made calls to him, but it was, sure wasn't no 25 calls. And that's April 6th, then? That's the uh, the one that we voted on the emergency legislation. Which one are we going to right now? I'm... I don't know if you're allowed to strike that from the minutes. No, you can't. You can't strike well, that. It was wrong, but it was still said. You can't strike that from the minutes. I did say it. Well, I'll vote not to approve the minutes then because I didn't. I didn't call him. I've got a phone record. Okay. Well, we have we have a, a first. We have a second though, correct? Yes. Okay, and then roll call. Mm -hmm. Yes. Alberini. I yes. I can't hear. I'm sorry. Yes. Alberini. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Waddell. Yes. Braymeyer. Yes. Ariak. No. I'll make a motion to accept the regular meeting minutes. April. Second. April. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Yeah. Alberini? Yeah. Waddell? Yes. Braymeyer? Yes. Bariak? Yes. Savette? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, where are we at here? Uh, public hearings? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, unfinished business. And that's the. Uh, Okay. Uh, new business. I'll make a motion to accept the finance director's March report and the attachments. Okay. Do we have a second on that? Second. Okay. Mr. Savette. Roll call. Yes. Braymeyer. Yes. Bariak. Yes. Savette. Yes. Alberini. Yes. I can't hear. Uh, Me too. <laughs> Mayor, is the finance director hooked up with us? No. no. Why? I don't know. We're in, we're in a new business right now. This is a third meeting that she hasn't been available, sir. For questions. I think they have poor internet communications in Bloomfield where she lives at. Out, uh, out on Penman Road. Uh, the signal is not very good out there. Director, during the weeks prior to the sure. meeting, can we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in a new business. business. No, no, I wanted, I wanted to talk under the, with the finance director. I didn't know that she was going to be. Yeah, I don't think the signal is, is working out for. Her. <laughs> well, if you'll let me uh, have another question uh, to the city managers, it's a simple. Qu could, could we? Uh, yeah, Could I ask, since it, 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 it can be for the finance director or the city manager? Well, you know, we'll wait until after okay. the, the public comments and the new okay. business, okay? All right, fine. Um, roll call on the new business. We already did. There's no new business. We already voted oh, okay. on it. Yeah. Motion to accept the, uh, the report. We yeah, we did that. Second. We, didn't have we did that. that. Oh, did we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, public comments. Do we have anybody? Yeah, we do. We have one request. And if he picks up, he'll be on in just a second.
Good evening. Mr. Hansen, uh, you're on live on the record with the city council. Please state your name and address. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I just wanted to make a, a, a brief remark on, on the masks. And, and uh, you know, the elected and civil servants uh, Mr. are at the public's disposal. Yeah, and, Mr. Hansen, you've got to give your name and address. Health and, and safety issues. And if there are any people that are crying about this uh, dividing our community, uh, then they're careless and they're irresponsible and unpatriotic. And I'd go as far as to say they're knuckle draggers. You know, these masks are for the protection of the elderly people, our police, the civil servants, and the people that are in poor health with compromised immune systems. And, and I want to, you know what? I want to thank the guys, or I, I want to I want to thank the city fathers who bared on the side of caution and enforced this mask ordinance. And, and we're, you know, I, I, we're, we're all impatient. We all want to get out, man, the, the birds are singing. We're cutting the grass. I'm ready to roll too, but let's, let's just, you know, hold on a little bit. We're, we're, we're almost there, you know, we're almost there. And, and one other thing I wanted to bring to everybody's attention is your cell phone case. Don't forget to wash that cell phone case because we put that phone case down and, uh, it, it rubs on everything. So once a day, you need to take some, some pine saw or borax or something and give that phone case a good scrubbing and, like I said, we'll be out of the woods here. Just hang loose, folks. We're we're almost we're almost there. I can I can taste the cold beer, and the uh, you know the cheeseburgers from Big D's now. And and that that's it. Thank you and and good night, everybody. Okay. Somebody else. Okay. Um, all right. Closing remarks. Um, the only thing I have is that. Um, situation like this like I, I usually try to do is, is, is be very encouraging and situation like this with these these masks and everything in here it makes it difficult and I obviously do thank the individuals that are here and um, I know myself just to be else it's 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 frustrating um, it's one thing to follow some of the orders when it's 30 out, but like days like yesterday, it's getting warmer and we're getting antsy like Mr. Hansen said, but um, different individuals, some on the council, some in the community have different views. We look at statistics, statistics can be turned in, in many different ways and, and, and such, and we get a, a emotional and worked up and, and I would just ask that we would, uh, you know, continue to work together. I, I look at, like I've said before, five individuals on council that I'm blessed to be able to uh, serve alongside of you. I, I think the world of each of you that you're you're here tonight thinking about your community. Same thing with the city manager, the uh, the law director, Mrs. King, the chief of police, the individual for the newspaper, and everybody that's here. You know, I thank you for your your service and what you're doing. But I would, you know, mention that we're going to get through this. This is going to end at some point in time and we're going to rub shoulders with each other for a long time and be in the same community together i'd ask that we don't uh come against each other and, and lose the fact that we're you know uh, americans newtonians or, or whatever the word is that um you know that we don't burn any bridges and the, the fact of the matter is like i said we're going to get through this and let's uh try to um, take a deep breath suck it up and, and lift each other up and, and, and that's about all i have um, anybody else? Yes. Mr. Baryak? Uh, I wanted to ask the finance director tonight, these are my personal comments. If the uh, open checkbook, they say it was done, but has it been released yet? Yeah, they... Please. Uh, Mr. Baryak, it was submitted to the state of Ohio, and the state has not released it. We suspect it's because the Department of the State that is charged with releasing our checkbook information uh, has uh, not had anybody that's actually in the office they're working from home and they're trying to keep up with an unbelievable amount of financial issues as a result of COVID-19 that have been thrown at them I can't speak for them but we've done everything we're required to do so it can be put up 
on the Ohio Checkbook website, and they haven't done it. And we don't have the authority or ability to put it on the website ourselves. We're not allowed to. I understand that. I just wanted to let the public know they're having trouble. Sure. The other thing we didn't we got into tonight, and I'm sorry we got into such a heated discussion. This is from you. It said that we've spent nothing on a chrono out of the 462,000. Now, what I wanted to ask the finance director tonight: Are there bills coming in? Are there bills coming in that sure. haven't been paid though? Are there invoices? No. You no. say you spent not a penny. Of well, the $462,000 hasn't been transferred into the general fund, so you can't spend it till it's transferred into the general fund. There, so it's, so zero not, uh, of that 462 has been transferred into the general fund. Okay. Zero. Okay, then that's all of that. All right. A couple of things, uh, continuation. I talked at the last meeting about the, the community garden. The uh, paperwork's been, been completed on the quick claim deeds. The city owns the property now, uh, although I left the paperwork at home. And uh, you'll get <laughs> I say. Uh, so um, hopefully at the next meeting, we will have a flyer from the lady who is uh, going to run this and manage it. I hope to be up there on either the 14th, 15th, or 16th to till the ground up, get it all ready to go. There's been some comments uh, both ways about the pros and cons of this. There's some people in the area that have used to have their own gardens, and people would come in at night in the you know, late summer and take their products out of the garden and uh, kind of upset them, in which I would see you spend all summer growing your product and tending your garden, and somebody wants to walk away with it. Uh, unfortunately, that happens, but there are a couple of people that live in the area where the garden is going to be that have cameras and have offered to put cameras on the garden. I thought that was interesting. It is going to be lit. There's a light right there, so the garden will be lit at night. Uh, so anyway, we're going ahead with that. And those who want to utilize the community garden here uh, pretty soon, you can start planting your, your uh, vegetables or your flowers or whatever you want. Also, it's kind of important, I think, every year to our students that are um, who do well academically. And this year, you know, Newton Falls in the last three years has produced a lot of valedictorians. It's kind of amazing. This year we have, I believe, six valedictorians. And they're not going to get the, uh, the chance to do what those in the past or maybe those in the future are going to get to do. They're not going to be able to stand in front of an audience and give their speech and talk about you know, their high school and, and their future and what they're going to do. And I think that we need to here take the opportunity um, as soon as we can get people back into the uh, building here. We need to set up a night and uh, need to get with the superintendent and the principals and find out who these individuals are and contact them, give them some kind of a, you know, a window of, you know, five, six, seven minutes and, and have each one of them come to the podium and introduce themselves and talk to the public through our you know, our TV system and talk. That's the only way they're going to get to do this. And I think that we owe them that opportunity to, you know, showcase what they've done for the time they've been in high school. I know I talked to Mr. Lynch about doing this. I'm not sure how we want to go about it, but I want to make sure that this doesn't get dropped off the table, that these students, these young men and women do get a chance to express themselves and tell this community how grateful they are. These are closing comments. When I asked the two questions yes. about the finance director, I gave up the rest of my time now. Mm -hmm. No, you, 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 you for the, the couple questions, I believe. Or, well, I wanted to say something, but I, I okay. thought yeah, I wanted to yeah, ask the ahead. finance director something. Yeah, go ahead if you got something to say. Or would you, in closing comments. Yes. I wanted to say what's one thing tonight to the indices of the public and all the citizens of Newton Falls. Um, no one, no one speaks for John Bariak except John Bariak. Family, other people, anybody. I've made mistakes. I probably will make more mistakes, but I speak for myself. I'm willing to stand on my own two feet. This isn't personal. I don't want it to be personal. And I hope that the public will realize that, that a good government is transparent to the max. 
And I don't want to argue, but if there's questions that need to be answered that I feel I should have answered to quell the, there was quite a, a, an outcry over this. I've never had so mm. many people call. I'm not getting into it, but I do owe my constituents and I do <coughs> owe the people of Newton Falls that I'm here trying to do the best I can do. And I am not perfect either. And the last thing I want anybody to think in this community is that I don't care about them. I've been here 70 years, almost 71. I'm in the, coming in the home stretch right now. Forbid, I don't want anybody to die. I don't want anybody to get hurt. But sometimes things happen and we just can't control them. Mm -hmm. We can't control them. And I don't want to, I'm, it's a two-headed snake. Some people do, or don't want to shop here now. Some people will think it more safe. It was, it, my own personal opinion, it was a controversy co created that we didn't need to create. I hopefully we can get through it, we can get past it. But that, I thought I would share that tonight with the public that I mm -hmm. stand and I speak for myself. Because there's some people saying, all family members, no, no one, no one speaks for John Barak. If they, anybody that knows me in this town, and I trust a lot of people know me, know the one thing that I'm, I have my own opinions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was kind of thinking like along the lines, you know, coming into tonight, like you had said, it was kind of a heated tonight. And I think that each of us expected that and I've seen heated meetings here in the past but I think this was actually had a uh, a positive spin to it I, I believe even being a little bit heated and you look at a situation like this with a, a pandemic um, I don't think there's a councilman here a uh, city manager or a mayor that has a uh, I don't know a, a manual right in front of us of how to handle a situation like this and when you have a situation like this, and I, I used to teach CPR, and there was a question that people would get caught up on, is um, if you get sued for maybe breaking a rib or something like that when you're given CPR, and my answer to the students was, I sure hope someday that I get sued for breaking a rib, because that means that person lived to, to come back. And that's kind of my thought with this whole thing here with all of us. Maybe we fumble a few here or mess up a little bit, but if, if we get through this as a community and we can come back and t together and you know high five and, and get back within the, the six foot when we can wash that away and start building some relationships again, I'll, I'll be a, a happy guy. Um, so anybody else have any closing comments? Mr. Chairman, the three remote council people are having a hard time hearing you, so if you could ask them individually if they have comments. Okay. Uh, Mr. Savette, you have any closing comments? Um, I just wanted to ask the city manager if there has been any word on a graduation ceremony, um, virtual or um, drive-in. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, may I respond to that? Yes. Yeah, um, Tom Gregory, who is uh, actually in another room, we're using a robotic camera tonight in the control room, uh, has been talking about a special ceremony. And as soon as I have those details uh, in his communication with the schools, I will make a point of conveying them to all the members of council. But they are looking for a way to engage in a virtual mm -hmm. graduation, and uh, I think the kids deserve it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Anything else, Thank Mr. Savet? Anything else, Mr. Savet? Nope, that's it. Okay, um, Mrs. Braymeyer. No, I have nothing. Okay, thank you, Mr. Alberini. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to encourage the residents. Um, this soon will pass, or is, this soon shall pass, as our mothers have told us. But I think it's very, very, very important uh, not to penalize our local businesses who are struggling to make ends meet. So I think it's important that I, I've seen some of the comments on Facebook as I'm home watching this, and I'm, I'm really concerned about it, that we are hurting local businesses here by taking our dollars out of town. Uh, but the good news is, is that we were at Shop and Save yesterday, and I have never seen uh, that store so busy. So I would ask those residents 
uh, please set aside your, your personal differences and support these people. Some of them are on the verge of bankruptcy, and it's not their own fault. But I think we have to extend uh, uh, our, our, our finances into the community to help these, these local businesses out. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Everybody in Newton Falls, be blessed this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, Misty, Mr. City Manager, you have any closing remarks? Uh, no, I think I've said enough. <laughs> okay. All right. And it doesn't appear that we have anything for executive session, correct? No. Okay. So do we have a, a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make that motion. Mr. Pariak? No, okay. And we get a second. Um, okay. Roll call. Raymeyer. Yes. Pariak. Yes. Savette? Yes. Alberini? Yes. Waddell? Yes. All right. Are we still on, you guys? Yep. I'm not sure. <laughs>